Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams and what I'm going to do today is give you an overview of charts and graphs. Um, this is kind of an introduction or an overview to how we begin to create frequency distributions so that we can graphically depict data. So I'm going to start with some definitions. Raw data is simply the values or the observations that we collect from either an experimental or observational study. Raw data can either be grouped or ungrouped. Ungrouped, honestly, it's just a hot mess. So, unless you absolutely have no other choice than work with ungrouped data, or you just have a very small amount of data, um, we're going to want to be able to to group it and create a frequency distribution so that we can then graph it. A frequency distribution is really nothing more than a summary of our data that we have presented in a format comprised of class intervals or classes and the associated frequency. When we talk about frequency, we're talking about the frequencies within the classes. In other words, how many or how frequently do observations fall into that class? Think about it in the most basic term. Classes. Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Frequencies. The number of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Like anything else in statistics, we have a procedure in place in order to create these frequency distributions. And it all begins with classes. Classes being those groups or intervals um, that we're going to put our data in. There are a couple of rules. One is they have to be mutually exclusive. In other words, they can't overlap. They have to butt up against one another. We refer to that as contiguous, which is a 50 cent word for today. Um, they need to bump up against one another. Think about putting paper towels on the countertop. Um, if they don't touch one another, you're going to have leakage. And we don't want our data to leak in between our classes. They need to be exhaustive, and I don't mean exhaustive like studying statistics exhausts me. Exhaustive simply refers to the fact that we have to have a home for every data point. So they have to exhaust or use up all of the possible locations for our data. And then we have this funky 2 to the K rule that we can apply in terms of the determining the number of classes that we have in our distribution. Unfortunately, what we know is that the number of classes in a frequency distribution is not set. In other words, it depends on the data. It depends on what the individual researcher is trying to show. It depends on whether or not there's a natural break in the data. When all else fails, you can use what we refer to as a 2 to the K rule. Sorry about that little screen showing up there. When we talk about this 2 to the K rule, what we're really saying is we find out n, which is equal to the number of data points that we have in our set. And in this case, I'm going to say that I have 80. What I can do is I can take 2 and raise it to the power of k, where k represents the number of classes. So what I would do is I would take 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 
is 32 times 2 is 64 times 2 is drumroll please 128 and that's where I can stop because the 2 to the K rule says continue to raise 2 to the power of itself until your result is greater than n. And so what we knew is we ended up with 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. 128 is bigger than 80 and now I count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have raised 2, coming over here, I've raised 2 to the 7th power, power is greater than n, which gives me 7 classes. That's all that 2 to the k rule is. It's just a way to determine the number of classes if you are not instructed how many classes to create, the data does not fall into a natural break, um, or you're just generally, generally clueless about what you want to do. So, always remember 2 to the k rule back there in the back of your brain. So, now we move on to the idea of class width. Class width is determined by taking the range of the data and divide it by the number of classes. Well, we all remember, I hope, that the range of a set of data is simply nothing more than finding out how far it is from the largest to the smallest data point. In other words, range is simply defined as the difference between the largest and smallest numbers in the data. So if we take range divided by the number of classes, that will give us the class width. Now, the best piece of advice I can give you is to round that answer up. This violates every rule of math that you all have ever learned, but you do not round up your class width to at least the next whole integer. You will not have room when you get to the largest values in your data set you're going to be mad because you're going to have to start all over again. So you can go ahead and even if you get a class width of 24.002, I'm always going to round to a class width of 25 because then I'm sure all of my data fits and I'm going to be happy and I'm not going to have to do this twice. So, what are, now that I've got classes and I have a class width, now I have to determine my frequencies. Well, what are frequencies? Frequencies are simply the number of my observations that fall inside of my classes. And I'm going to do that by tallying. Now, tallying is a highly technical statistical process whereby you look at a class and you say, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine data points that fall into one particular class. I go to my next one and I say, I have one, two, three, that would give me three in my next class. So tallying literally are these little hash marks that we learned to do when we were way little. The key to this is remember you have to include all of your observations. So if in my data set the number nine appeared 15 times, I'm going to include it all 15 times. In other words, just because 9 appears once, I have to count it every single time. So for every 9 that I see, 
I'm going to give myself a hash mark. So don't say to yourself, oh, well, I've already included nine, so I can ignore all of these. Remember, these, although they look like numbers, they're not. They're data points. They're observations. They're weights. They're ages. They're the number of dogs somebody has. Um, they're the number of transactions that somebody has in the express line at the grocery store. And because they are individual data point and observations, each one must be accounted for. Once you have created your classes, which are your these lower and upper limits, these frequencies, remember, represent your tallies. So these were your little hash marks. Um, we, you can then go through and create a percentage distribution and then cumulative frequency and percentage distributions. The key to this is that my classes were properly constructed. You can see that they go from 12 up to, but not including 35, 35 up to, but not including 58, 58 up to, but not including 81. There's no room for anything to leak. So they are absolutely um, mutually exclusive. They are contiguous. And as we can see, they're exhausted because I had 88 data points in my set um, from either my observational or experimental study and I see that all 88 fit. All 88 observations had a home and only one home. So this set of classes right here meets the criteria for exhaustive. We know there's no overlap so they're mutually exclusive and everybody has a happy place to be. So Watch my next video um, on actually constructing the graphs and you'll be able to create something as beautiful as this in no time. See you guys around the statistics cooler.